Hi, this is John. At a lunar lunch a few weeks ago, among various topics discussed were how there are some basic techniques that people still don't know even when they're going for their certification. So I thought it would be good to cover some key techniques. These videos can tend to get kind of esoteric, but I wanted to limit myself in this video to three of the most fundamental things you need to know, and hopefully there's something for even those who are more experienced. So what I want to talk about is proper preparation and bonding with epoxy, checking stability of your rocket but not spending too much time in the simulator, and how to pack the recovery system. It's especially important to prepare surfaces for epoxy. You should clean any surfaces that the epoxy will stick to, sand them if necessary, and then clean them again before bonding. Here I'm cleaning with alcohol. Especially non-porous surfaces need to be roughed up so there's tooth for the epoxy to stick to. Here I'm sanding. You don't need to go nuts. This is just 150 grit sandpaper, but you should scuff up the surface enough so that there is roughness. And after sanding, clean again with alcohol to make sure you get the loose dust off and any other fingerprints or other contaminants. Another thing that's important for getting good results is to make sure the parts are firmly held in place before you mix the epoxy. Here I'm using cyanoacrylate glue, crazy glue, to tack the parts in place, but you could also clamp them, attach them with tape, or anything that holds them sturdily in place while the epoxy is applied. And of course, mix the epoxy thoroughly. Follow manufacturer's instructions, if any, and make sure that it's completely consistent. There aren't two different colors or streaks. Try to pack the epoxy thoroughly into any joint areas. Here, these blanks simulate fins attached to an airframe. I want to pack the epoxy in so that it fills in a triangular joint. Make sure there are no gaps, no bubbles, nothing, and pack it tight. You can follow up with a gloved finger to make sure that it's packed into the joint. And finally, epoxy cures more slowly and produces a weaker joint if it cures at too low a temperature. So consider using a space heater if you're working in an unheated space in the winter. Okay, now that it's cured, let's see how well I did. Both of these were cleaned with epoxy, but only one was sanded first. Both pretty tough, but the one that wasn't sanded definitely broke first, and the other one is still solid. Flight simulators are critical tools, but it's easy to get carried away with them. I like to enter a basic drawing and then use that to get the center of pressure. Mark the center of pressure directly on your rocket for future reference. This is the key piece of information you get out of the simulator. Fully prep the rocket and then weigh it and get its balance point for the center of gravity. This is much more accurate and less time consuming than trying to enter all the components into the simulator. Then go back into the simulator and enter the measured weight and center of gravity for much more accurate results. In particular, don't add nose weight until you're absolutely sure you need it. Most normal rocket shapes don't require extra weight. No matter how big the rocket gets, it still seems like there's not enough space for the recovery system. You gotta protect the parachute and the bridle from the ejection charge gases. The parachute itself always seems to take up more space than it should. And bridles three to five times as long as the rocket take up even more space. The only real solution is to neatly and carefully pack everything. 
Z folding the bridle not only makes it take up less space, but also keeps it neat so it doesn't tangle either during packing or deployment. The parachute can also be a giant mess and you don't want to just try to wad it up and jam it in. It's certain to get tangled. Different parachutes will have different best techniques for folding. This is a Rocketman X-Form parachute with four shroud lines. It's pretty large and pretty heavy so you have to be careful packing it. I like to fold it flat in quarters so that all the shroud lines are gathered at the bottom, squeeze out the air, and then drape the shroud lines inside neatly so that they're not all tangled up outside. Then we can fold the parachute one more time from each side and roll it up into a tight cylinder. As you roll, try to get as much air out as possible. We want it to slide easily into the tube and slide out easily during recovery. So I hope there was something new in there for you. Sometimes even the basics are not actually that simple.